Horton Ho 229 is often seen as one of the most groundbreaking aircraft designs from World War II. This prototype jet-powered flying wing was created by the Horton brothers, Reimar and Walter, developed for Nazi Germany's Luftwaffe. The plane was meant to meet the military's demand for advanced, high-performance fighters that could outmatch Allied forces. Although it never went into mass production, the 229 continues to captivate aviation historians and enthusiasts today, thanks to its innovative design and the possibilities it represented. The Horton brothers were really intrigued by the flying wing design, which does away with the traditional fuselage and tailplane to create a single, streamlined wing. This innovative approach cuts down on drag and boosts lift, leading to much better performance. Motivated by the potential benefits of this design, the Hortons started tinkering with gliders back in the 1930s, refining their ideas and techniques along the way. Fast forward to the early 1940s, and Germany was feeling the heat on multiple fronts. The Luftwaffe was on the lookout for fresh ideas to regain air superiority. Hermann Göring, who was in charge of the Luftwaffe, kicked off the ambitious 3x1000 project. The goal? To create an aircraft that could carry a 1,000 kg bomb, reach speeds of 1,000 km per hour, and have an operational range of 1,000 km. For the Horton brothers, this was the perfect chance to put their flying wing concept to use in a jet-powered fighter bomber. The Horton 229 was a real game-changer not just because of its unique shape, but also because of its innovative engine setup. It was powered by twin Junkers Jumo 04 jet engines, the same ones found in the Messerschmitt Mi-262, which was the world's first operational jet fighter. This combination promised impressive speed and range that other aircraft of the time simply couldn't match. Interestingly, its wooden frame was a result of wartime material shortages, and it was covered with a carbon-based coating. Some people even think this might have given it some radar-evading capabilities, essentially a primitive form of stealth technology. The first prototype, known as the Ho V-1, started off as an unpowered glider, which was key in proving that the flying wing design could actually work. Then, the second prototype, the Ho V-2, added those jet engines and took to the skies for its first flight in 1944. Unfortunately, the project ran into some delays due to technical issues and the increasingly tough situation Germany was facing in the war. If the plane had been fully developed, it could have really shaken things up for the Allied forces. With an estimated top speed of over 970 km per hour, about 600 miles per hour, and the ability to fly at altitudes of 15,000 meters, around 49,000 feet, it would have been one of the fastest and highest flying planes of the war. Plus, its sleek design and potential stealth features could have made it tough for Allied radar to pick up, allowing it to sneak past defenses and hit key targets. Unfortunately, the plane never made it past the prototype phase. The third prototype was still being built when American troops took control of the Gotha factory, where it was being assembled in early 1945. The 229 has had a lasting impact that goes well beyond its short and troubled history during the war. Its design principles have influenced aviation advancements in the years that followed, notably the Grumman B-2 Spirit Stealth Bomber, which also features a flying wing design. Even today, engineers and designers are still exploring the 229 to gain insights into its aerodynamic qualities and groundbreaking engineering. If you ever find yourself in Virginia, you can check out the V-3 prototype at the National Air and Space Museum. It stands as a testament to the innovative spirit of the Horton brothers. Although its ties to Nazi Germany cast a shadow over its legacy, the aircraft's technological breakthroughs are a striking example of human creativity, even during one of history's darkest times.